Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. This is the Classy Stallion, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This is the second most voted for vehicle this week, coming in with an even 40 votes. Don't forget to go vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in Willett Off-Road by clicking on the link in the description down below. And of course, we start off with the best comment from last week. That is indeed how many Coopers are made. We give them to Commander Hobo. <laughs> And he turns into Mini Coopers. Anyway, the Stallion. Uh, one of two very similar cars that we're going to be testing today. And one of my favorite cars in GT Online. Maybe not in my top five, but I love the Stallion. Of course, I have to stop right there. Point out the fact that, yes, this car does indeed still sport the Classique logo that it has carried since Grand Theft Auto 4. They didn't bother to change it, even though they changed it to the Classy. So, to my good buddy Classic, yes, your name is still carried on this car. So, the Stallion. Fantastic muscle car. I mean, granted, not a race winner. It is clearly a hiker killer. I think he actually was killed. I'm not sure. Um, but not a race winner. It, it just doesn't have everything required to... To get, it doesn't have enough of everything required. It has good acceleration, not the best. It has good handling, not the best. You know, and on and on and on and on. But what that means is it's not a handful to drive like some of the top muscle cars and the challenges that they present. And so you wind up with one something that I think is a beautiful car. I love the look of this car. Uh, especially from about that, uh, the the rear of the front door back, and how much it just really does look like an Oldsmobile Cutlass. Um, it just really does. But it's, it's a good-looking car. I think it's a nice-sounding car. Um, honestly, I wish it didn't have a turbo on this one. I, I think it'd be better without the turbo effect on an old muscle car. But... It's just pleasant to drive as well. Because it's not going to constantly spin out on you. And it's not constantly going to, you know, have you going way faster than you anticipated and not have the braking to bring you to a stop. It, it's just a pleasant car to drive around in. And I do, when I'm on my second character, wind up driving this car a lot. I also wind up driving the car that this car replaced him. Uh, the place that it gets in our standings, which we'll look at in just a second. But you can see it's not doing too bad off-road. I don't think I've ever taken this car off-road, like, ever before this. And aside from that little mishap, which that was more driver error turning in a little too soon, it was, this has been a completely unremarkable climb, which that's what you want, it is for things to just go. Maybe not so fast yeah, all, all the time, but to just go without issue even gets up that really steep slick pit right there without too much drama or fuss and it's up in three minutes nine seconds so will it off-road yeah and that makes it good for fourth place that de-seated uh the picador that was currently uh, that was holding fourth place so not bad at all and it did it by um about five seconds faster i think in the Picador, which that's kind of impressive. Brings it in only one second slower, or not even a, a whole second, just under a second slower than the Nightshade. So, good times uh, from the Stallion. Good times. Good times. Happy times. Ah, uh, God. Control descent. So, as you can see right there, the brakes work. Uh, it, that's the thing with this car. Just don't get too much speed going and you'll be fine. It does bounce around a little bit because of its, you know, boat-like uh, suspension. But that's okay. If you know it's going to do that, you can accommodate and be ready for it. Honestly, again, there wasn't too much of an issue on the descent where it caught me off guard. It handled exactly as I expected it to handle. Sorry, I went quiet there. Sneezing fit. My allergies and sinuses are in full-on attack mode today. But, you know, that's just what we call any day ending in Y in my life lately. 
So, I like the stallion. I, I think we've established that much. And it, it's, you know what? A decent off-roader. I mean, obviously, again, it, it should be said, is this thing going to do, you know, deep water crossings? No, don't be silly. Is it going to do rock crawling? No, don't be silly. But it can drive in the dirt on a pretty steep hill and keep traction and go up and down a mountain. And I think that's pretty remarkable for what it really is. You know, a, a nice floaty, boaty, throaty sounding muscle car. And it does. Oh, God, listen to that. I think it's just, I, I like that it doesn't have the loud, shouty engine. It just has the, the nice muscle exhaust note without having to bah! everywhere. However, it does have an unfortunate meaning with the treatment crashes. That's like the only major incident I think that we had. Well, no, we had that one going back up the mountain. Uh, going up the mountain, that's right. But now that we're back down here on the asphalt, this is kind of why I love this car. You can just gun it and, and really go. I mean, I have to lift a little bit for the, the sharper corner, but not too much. And then the brakes are pretty good, so much that I nearly stopped too soon. Two minutes, 38 seconds to get back down the mountain. So we'll take it back to the top. Apparently, I just lost one of the level because there's RP popping up at the top of the screen. And we will start a damage descent. Oh, that's right. I did have one of the level for taking out hikers on the way back up. Nice and controlled through that first little bit, but we immediately lose the hood. Of course, the windshield was already gone, uh, as well as one of the uh, headlights from our collision with the tree of any crashes. I don't know why. It just never gets old watching these cars fly down this mountain. Maybe that's why people still watch these videos. Eh, maybe. So, somebody asked me the other day what it would take to get me to do Will It Off-Road on foot. And at the time, I said, never going to happen. And if you actually wind up voting for on foot, you see in the results, it's exactly what it says. On foot, not going to happen. Because, um, well, it's just not. But they, they asked me to come up with a, a goal. Something that, that would uh, guarantee... Will it off-road on foot to happen? So, one of two goals can happen. Number one. Have my channel reach 25,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And if you're not paying attention to how big my channel gains subscribers, then you know how uh, comfortable I am in making that promise, knowing that well, it won't happen. Or number two. Have Patreon get fully funded, which has a monthly goal of $3,500. So I think we currently have $15. Look at that. Best ever accidental stunt in Willet Off-Road. We're down to 145. Let's take a look at the damage. All the lights, all the windows, and the hood are gone. The doors of the trunk won't close. There is actually some body damage, and the wheels are bent. Which brings us to our next vehicle. The Class E Vajero. Like I said, very similar cars today. Um, they both do about the same driving them around. So let's see how they both do with Will It Off Road. This is the most voted for vehicle this week with 49 votes coming in, nine votes ahead of where the stallion was. Commander Hobo to the right in his Tony Soprano mobile. While we have Mecca vaingloriously stroking his long beard in approval. Or I guess it could be her long beard. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. But anyway, so as I was saying, those are the two ways I will do Will It Off-Road on foot. One of those two things has to happen. By the end of this year, either Patreon gets fully funded or I get 25,000 subscribers. Which is to say, it'll never happen. So, the Vajero. Uh, this car is... I guess you could say it's a bit more and a bit less. Um, you'll see several times where I have to correct because uh, the back wheels let go and we wind up spinning around. And there's this issue. 
it rolls for some reason. Though I love that I landed on the hiker and then it burned out on her face. She survived, but I don't know if you heard that. Ugh! This commander was there behind to make sure no witness survived. Um, yeah, this car rolls over at weird times. I I didn't know that to a little off-road, but then I drove it around for a little bit in the lobby after, and sure enough, just it, weird little things make it roll over. It's not, you know, like faction levels of weirdness, but it, 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 I don't know, it just it seemed like a peculiar thing. Um, so, you know, it rolls over a little bit. It's a little harder to control than the stallion, not by much. Of course, you know, it has different exhaust, no, all that. But in speed, in terms of speed and everything, I've never really thought of these cars as all that much different. Honestly, I haven't looked at what they do in top speed or in terms of around the track. Because I don't care, because again, we know they're not like the top two or three muscle cars. So if ever I'm in a racing situation with them, I mean, I'm going to pick the Pisswasser Dominator and, you know, move on. These cars wouldn't even be considered. Uh, so, yeah, I, I never really looked at their stats so much. I own these cars because I like them. And you can tell on both these cars across two different characters that I've had them for a long time because they still both have this B7 Tumo uh, license plates on them. And those are cars that I've had for a long time. As I switched to using the BTYB license plate when I changed the name of my YouTube channel, which, God, that was like almost two years ago now. So, yeah, Vigero Stallion, both have been with me for a long time. Uh, I don't think either one of them have ever been at risk of being sold off when I was out of space. I never sell cars for money in GTA. I just don't do it. If there's a new car that comes out and I don't have the money for it, I just earn the money. I don't sell an existing car because it's such a poor way to spend your money in the game because you lose so much. You either earn it and then just have all the cars. This one struggled a little bit for a second. But then finally found its ability to get up. And we're up 3 minutes, 11 seconds. So we'll hit off-road. Yep. It does. Though it doesn't go under the 3 minutes. Neither one of these cars did today. Very, very similar times with each other. Just right there within, what, like a second and a half of each other. So not bad at all. I do want to point out that they both displaced the Picador mentioned that earlier and i mentioned that because the picador there you go see roly poly car the picador is all wheel drive uh, granted it doesn't have the acceleration that these two have but it is all wheel drive i think it's the only all wheel drive muscle car unless i'm mistaken so i was kind of surprised to see these two kind of middle of the pack type muscle cars uh, have that capability to bump it down to sixth place. So, gotta talk about the rain. I normally don't do will it off road in the rain, but since it had just, it literally just started raining as I started driving off the mountain, I thought maybe I could make it down before the puddles formed. Uh, we'll see in just a minute. I was wrong about that. Because unless there's a puddle on the mountain, it's actually not slick. I, it, test it for yourself. You know, go up when it looks like it might be about to start raining. And, and see how your traction responds. When it first starts raining, your car is going to behave like you're driving on just dry dirt. Uh, it's once you see a puddle that it starts behaving like you're driving on mud. Um, so no, that spin out right there was not due to the rain. Spin out was due to everything in this car just spins out more. But there's our first puddle, and you'll notice that the back end immediately is going to start getting a little more difficult to control, and I had to slow down. Yeah, even though we see dirt coming up, it's still there. I thought I could save this. I really thought I had it saved. I mean, we were out of control there, and it was going wild. But I think if it hadn't have been raining, I could have saved this and just driven over to the trail. But, yeah, I made the mistake of trying to do a burnout to flip around, and that just caused the car to go backwards down the hill. Land. So, you know... Maybe I should put control down there in quotation marks, because uh, not so much. Uh, yeah, maybe we just combine the two. I wasn't really sure where I was at this point, so I was going to stop trying to get my bearings. I know that the trail's right up there, but I also know I'm not going to get to it. Uh, not in the rain, not in a muscle car, not in this muscle car. 
Uh, maybe a slower muscle car. Maybe the Picador with its all-wheel drive. So I decided just to drive down and try to find the trail down here. Because um, and this is, I, I did a little bit of the test to see what we could do. That wasn't even full throttle. You heard it bouncing off the rev limiter. It's because the back wheels were just spinning, no matter what I did. There was nowhere that they got traction pointing up that hill. So, you know, if you're uh, faced with a situation that it's raining and you need to drive one of these cars up a mountain, well, don't pick the Vajero. Is the Vajero? Yeah, the Vajero spawns in traffic. Yeah, because you steal it. So I'm pretty sure I didn't even paint this one. I think all I did was upgrade it mechanically and tint the windows. Might have changed the wheels. I don't remember. I've had this car for so long. Don't drive it all that often, but I still like it. I love the way it looks. I love the way it sounds. Which is true for, like, any muscle car, you can pretty much say I like the way it looks and I like the way it sounds, because truth. Very, very, very wet as we get down to the bottom of the mountain. We're down in three minutes, almost 28 seconds. So, in the rain, I drove it back to the top, but it quit raining. Actually, I think it quit raining just as we started driving back to the top of the mountain. Yeah, and I say we because Commander Hobo is still behind me in his big Tony Soprano mobile. I keep saying Tony Soprano mobile because I honestly, my brain is like, it's gone 404 on me. File not found, and I can't remember the name of that SUV for the life of me. I just can't. It's just not there. I mean, Chevy Suburban, real life, Tony Soprano drove one. So, the Soprano will be on. most of you are too young to remember the Sopranos, but go watch it on Amazon or HBO Go or HBO Now, whatever they're calling it these days. Great show. Anyway, got squished by Commander a little bit, but he's down a little bit farther ahead. I think we also got hit by his bumper. Has that happened yet? I wasn't watching there for a second. No, isn't that sad? I don't watch my own video. No, I did. I was watching, but I was like zoned out talking, so it's just stuff moving on the screen. Um, there went something off my car. Was that a fender? I think I dropped a fender. Still just kind of sliding. Just likes to be on its roof a little bit. I think Commander's driving on his own bumper down there. He had offered to give me a nudge, but if you remember, that's against some of the off road rules. They have to go up and down the mountain completely under their own power. I can get out and kick him if they get stuck on something, but that is the one exception. But that's why he was backing up, because he was offering to let me out. And I know you guys are going to laugh at me for not remembering the name of that SUV back there. I'll probably remember it just like as the video ends or something, or when we see the screenshots in a minute of Commander's car. And I don't know if you heard that, because I was running my big face hole. The engine has some damage. It's been a while since we've had a car go down this mountain that the engine took damage, but this one has it. I was hoping you would hear it there. Uh, it's just a slight, it, it's very minimal, but there is a slight rattle to the engine. So, yeah, been a while since we've heard that engine damage sound. Like, in fact, I I can't remember. I can't remember the last time we've heard it. Somebody will have to go back to the database and find out what's what. So, coming up to the wood pile, not nearly as dramatic as the stallion. The stallion had to be the best accidental stunt I've ever done in Willard Off Road. But it is down 2 minutes 25 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the Majero. All the lights are gone, most of the windows are gone. The front bumper is damaged, it's just kind of hanging on by the right hand side. Uh, the left front fender is gone, the left door is gone, the right door and the trunk will not close. There is pretty significant body damage and there are bent wheels. There is Commander's SUV. Yeah, it's looking pretty rough. Uh, I was hoping to, you know, we would start with the rear screenshot so I could see the name, but then you can see how well that worked out for me because he lost his cargo door. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this Will It Off-Road. Don't forget to go vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in Will It Off-Road by clicking on the link in the description down below. And, of course, there's also a link down there that shows you the results of everything from Will It Off-Road. Until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.